In today's video, I will share my experience, places visited and few of the best photos shot on our first day trip to Valletta, the capital city of Malta. So come, join us in our wonderful journey. Valletta was built by the Knights of St. John. When UNESCO named Valletta a World Heritage Site, it described it as one of the most concentrated historic areas in the world. To travel from Sliema to Valletta, one can opt for the ferry or bus. Sliema to Valletta ferry is 150 euros one ways and 280 for both ways. Else, if interested to go around the city in bus, then best is to get a rider card which costs 21 euros for 7 days. If you come to Valletta through the bus route, the city greets you with the Triton's Fountain located on the periphery of Valletta city gate. It consists of three tritons holding up a large basin of water fountain. Just behind it lies the Valletta city gate, also called the door of the city. The present gate is the fifth one to have stood on the site and was built between 2011 and 2014 through designs of the Italian architect Renzo Piano. Right to the city gates is the parliament and as you walk down further to your right, you will find the ruins of the Royal Opera House, which is now an open-air theatre. As you walk along the Valletta streets, the elaborate and architectural buildings with hanging balconies will not go unnoticed for sure. Valletta Straight Street is easily the most famous street in Malta, known as Strada Stretta in Maltese. The street was the pinnacle of nightlife amongst American and British military men and Maltese frequenters between the 19th and mid 20th century. As we walk down the streets, our next stop for the day is St. John Cathedral. Please note this cathedral closes at half past 4, so be sure to come early and if you wish to enter into the cathedral, it is for 10 euros each. A very good audio tour is available within the price of your tickets. St. John's Co Cathedral is a gem of Baroque art and architecture. It was built as the conventual church for the Knights of St. John. This church, till this very day, is an important shrine and a sacred place of worship. It is also a venue for cultural events. Every corner is highly decorated with 16th and 17th century art. Not only the walls and ceilings are decorated but also the floor is covered with memorials for the dead knights with inlaid intricate colorful marbles creating a rich tapestry effect all over the cathedral floors. Do not miss the Caravaggio's painting of the beheading of St. John the Baptist located in the side right chapel. The upper Paracca gardens are a public garden in Valletta. It gives you panoramic views of the harbour. Originally, these gardens were used by the Knight of St. John who were responsible for building Valletta. While the garden itself is very nice and well tended, it is the view from here that is outstanding. You can view the three cities area and their waterfronts from here. Nighttime views must be spectacular. This garden is far quieter than its upper Baraka cousin with fewer visitors. The views are lovely with plenty of benches in the sun or shade. It offers a breathtaking view of the Siege Bell War Memorial. And with that ends our first day trip to Valletta. Now sharing some of my favorite Insta shots on our first day travel. If you like the video, like, share and comment. And do not forget to subscribe as my next video is about my second day in Malta which is at 
and Dina, the shooting location of Game of Thrones, will upload it soon. Bye for now. Thank you.